Hello and welcome to today's Daily Bible Reading. We are up to, if you're counting, day 303. And on October 29, being the 29th day of the month, we'll be reading Proverbs chapter 29. 31 chapters in Proverbs and we're doing one each day corresponding to the day of this month. Let's pray. Father, give us a heart that says, Speak, Lord. Give us ears that wants to hear what you say to us. And Father, I pray that you would indeed minister to us by your spirit through your word now. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue in Ezekiel. This is Ezekiel chapter 13. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel who are prophesying and say to those who prophesy from their own hearts, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. Your prophets have been like jackals among ruins, O Israel. You have not gone up into the breaches or built up a wall for the house of Israel that it might stand in battle in the day of the Lord. They have seen false visions and lying divinations. They say, declares the Lord, when the Lord has not sent them, and yet they expect him to fulfill their word. Have you not seen a false vision and uttered a lying divination? Whenever you have said, declares the Lord, although I have not spoken. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have uttered falsehood and seen lying visions, therefore, behold, I am against you, declares the Lord God. My hand will be against the prophets who see false visions and who give lying divinations. They shall not be in the council of my people, nor be enrolled in the register of the house of Israel, nor shall they enter the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord God, precisely because they have misled my people, saying, Peace, when there is no peace. And because when the people build a wall, these prophets smear it with whitewash. Say to those who smear it with whitewash that it shall fall. There shall be a deluge of rain, and you, O great hailstones, will fall, and a stormy wind break out, and when the wind falls, it will not be said to you, Where is the coating with which you smeared it? Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I will make a stormy wind break out in my wrath, and there shall be a deluge of rain in my anger, and great hailstones in wrath, to make a full end. And I will break down the wall, that you have smeared with whitewash and bring it down to the ground so that its foundation will be laid bare. When it falls, you shall perish in the midst of it and you shall know that I am the Lord. Thus will I spend my wrath upon the wall and upon those who have smeared it with whitewash. And I will say to you, the wall is no more, nor those who smeared it. The prophets of Israel who prophesied concerning Jerusalem and saw visions of peace of her when there was no peace, declares the Lord God. And you, son of man, set your face against the daughters of your people who prophesy out of their own hearts. Prophesy against them and say, Thus says the Lord God, Woe to the women who sew magic bands upon all wrists and make veils for the heads of persons of every stature in the hunt for souls. Will you hunt down souls belonging to my people and keep your own souls alive? You have profaned me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread, putting to death souls who should not die and keeping alive souls who should not live by your lying to my people who listen to lies. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, behold, I am against your magic bands with which you hunt the souls like birds and I will tear them from your arms and I will let the souls whom you hunt go free, the souls like birds. Your veils also I will tear off and deliver my people out of your hand and they shall be no more in your hand as prey and you shall know that I am the Lord. Because you have disheartened the righteous falsely, although I have not grieved him, and you have encouraged the wicked that he should not turn from his evil way to save his life, therefore you shall no more see false visions nor practice divination. I will deliver my people out of your hand, and you shall know 
that I am the Lord. So it's, it does seem that there were clearly people who were claiming to be prophets and they were speaking out of their own minds, their own hearts, it says here in the text, and then expecting that God would do what they had prophesied. And this is the essence, really, of witchcraft. The idea of witchcraft and paganism is that we control God. And in paganism, they control the gods as they uh, purported to be. But in Christianity, in, in biblical faith that it's described here, it's, it's not a matter of us being able to control God. It's us being in surrender to God. It's God exercising his lordship over us, not the other way around. This is Ezekiel chapter 14. Then certain of the elders of Israel came to me and sat before me, and the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, these men have taken idols into their hearts and set the stumbling block of their iniquity before their faces. Should I indeed let myself be consulted by them? Therefore speak to them and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, any one of the house of Israel who takes his idols into his heart and sets the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and yet comes to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him as he comes with the multitude of his idols that I may lay hold of the hearts of the house of Israel who are all estranged from me through their idols. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, repent and turn away from your idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations for any one of the house of Israel or of the strangers who sojourn in Israel who separates himself from me taking his idols into his heart and putting the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and yet comes to a prophet to consult me through him I the Lord will answer him myself and I will set my face against that man I will make him a sign and a byword and cut him off from the midst of my people, and you shall know that I am the Lord. And if the prophet is deceived and speaks a word, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand against him and will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. And they shall bear their punishment, the punishment of the prophet, and the punishment of the inquirer shall be alike, that the house of Israel may no more go astray from me, nor defile themselves any more with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people and I may be their God, declares the Lord God. And the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, when a land sins against me by acting faithlessly and I stretch out my hand against it and break its supply of bread and send famine upon it and cut off from it man and beast, even if these three men, Noah, Daniel and Job, were in it, they would deliver but their own lives by their righteousness, declares the Lord God. If I cause wild beasts to pass through the land and they ravage it and it be made desolate so that no one may pass through because of the beasts, even if these three men were in it as I live, declares the Lord God, they would deliver neither sons nor daughters. They alone would be delivered, but the land would be desolate. Or if I bring a sword upon that land and say, let a sword pass through the land and I cut off from it man and beast, though these three men were in it as I live, declares the Lord God, they would deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they alone would be delivered. Now here's the, here's the point. The previous chapter presented the, the argument of the idolaters that they, by their enchantments and by what appeared to be amulets that, that, that they had made, women had made these bands for their wrists, claiming that they could now control the gods. And here God is saying, even the most faithful intercessors, prayer intercessors, if they prayed for this people, they wouldn't change my mind. That puts, that puts biblical Christianity or, or the faith of the, the God of the Bible in complete contradistinction to what paganism is. And I think we need, if I can say this, we need to be a little bit careful today that we don't succumb to what might be called word of faith preachers who say that if you do this, do this, do this, then God will do this. Because that's, 
that's the essence of paganism. We've got to be very careful there. Prayer is not us manipulating God. Prayer is us beseeching God. And if he chooses to respond, that's called grace. So we continue on. And, and also, just interesting, Noah, Daniel, Job. Is that the Daniel that was taken into exile? I'm not sure. Possibly. But also what's interesting is Job. So although when we've gone through Job, we, I made the case that Job wasn't actually formally written until they had returned from the exile. In other words, probably written some time in the exile. The story of Job was well known, uh, clearly. So, that anyway, verse 19. Or if I send a pestilence into that land and pour out my wrath upon it with blood to cut off from it man and beast, even if Noah, Daniel and Job were in it, as I live, declares the Lord God, they would, ne they would deliver neither son nor daughter, they would deliver but their own lives by their righteousness. For thus says the Lord God, How much more when I send upon Jerusalem my four disastrous acts of judgment, sword, famine, wild beasts and pestilence, to cut off from it man and beast. But behold, some survivors will be left in it, sons and daughters who will be brought out. Behold, when they come out to you, you will see their ways and their deeds, you will be consoled for the disaster that I have brought upon Jerusalem, for all that I have brought upon it. They will console you when you see their ways and their deeds, and you shall know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in it, declares the Lord God. So again, that just that just to make that point, that true worship is, is our surrender to God. Paganism is the attempt to control God or control the gods in their, in their worldview. This is Proverbs chapter 29. He who is often reproved yet stiffens his neck will suddenly be broken beyond healing. When the righteous increase, the people rejoice. But when the wicked rule, the people groan. He who loves wisdom makes his father glad, but a companion of prostitutes squanders his wealth. By justice, a king builds up the land, but he who exacts gifts tears it down. A man who flatters his neighbour spreads a net for his feet. An evil man is ensnared in his transgression, but a righteous man sings and rejoices. A righteous man knows the rights of the poor. A wicked man does not understand such knowledge. Scoffers set a city aflame, but the wise turn away wrath. If a wise man has an argument with a fool, the fool only rages and laughs, and there is no quiet. Bloodthirsty men hate one who is blameless and seek the life of the upright. A fool gives full vent to his spirit, but a wise man quietly holds it back. If a ruler listens to falsehood, all his officials will be wicked. The poor man and the oppressor meet together. The Lord gives light to the eyes of both. If a king faithfully judges the poor, his throne will be established forever. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. When the wicked increase, transgression increases, but the righteous will look upon their downfall. Discipline your son and he will give you rest. He will give delight to your heart. Where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. But blessed is he who keeps the law. By mere words, a servant is not disciplined, for though he understands, he will not respond. Do you see a man who is hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Whoever pampers his servant from childhood will in the end find him his heir. A man of wrath stirs up strife, and one given to anger causes much transgression. One's pride will bring him low, but he who is lowly in spirit will obtain honour. The partner of a thief hates his own life. He hears the curse, but discloses nothing. The fear of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. Many seek the face of a ruler, but it is from the Lord that a man gets justice. An unjust man is an abomination to the righteous. But one whose way is straight 
is an abomination to the wicked. More wisdom for the journey of life. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that we get a glimpse into what Ezekiel has said about what real, true worship involves. It involves our surrender. It involves our heart, not just our words, not just our, not just what it appears that we're doing, but Lord, our heart response to you. And so I pray today for those who are participating in this daily Bible reading, that Lord, their hearts will be filled with worship of you, the one true God. And I thank you, Lord, for those who've joined with me today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you again for being a part of this and thank you for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not yet a subscriber, important point, please subscribe. And I'll see you, or you'll see me rather, tomorrow for our next Daily Bible. Thank you.